Economics for Business Decision Making, Lesson 5. In this lesson, we are going to explore different examples of shifts in demand and supply curves and how that affects the market equilibrium. So let's start with a regular chart of demand and supply curves. As discussed previously, the demand curve slopes downwards as the higher the price is, the lower the number of customers will be willing to purchase the correspondent product or service. And the supply curve slopes upwards as companies are interested in higher price and are ready to offer more to the market and take more commercial risks if the price go up. Now, it is important to understand that the demand and supply curves are shifting constantly. The shifts might be tiny, moderate or dramatic. That's why companies monitor the dynamics of the demand and supply constantly in order to predict potential deficit or oversupply of their markets and thus adjust their pricing strategy, production plans, etc. For example, car sharing companies like Uber or Lyft adjust their pricing intraday depending on the shifts of the demand and supply curves. For instance, during peak hours, there are far more customers that are willing to get Uber Lyft. That means that the demand curve usually moves to the right, as there is more demand for each pricing point. In addition, usually during peak hours, there are far more customers who are ready to pay more for the same ride. That means that the demand curve is also moving up. The behavior of the customers change and that leads to the change in the position of the demand curve. Now, Uber and Lyft identify these changes and increase prices to meet the new market equilibrium. If they do nothing, there will be a deficit which will deteriorate their customer experience and will also lead to the loss in potential profits. When Uber and Lyft increase their prices, the customer experience is also affected, but now the companies have more profits to invest in the improvement of the customer relationship. Uber and Lyft use the same logic when during some days some locations experience lack of drivers. The supply curve is moving to the left, as now there are less drivers and thus less commute services can be offered at each price point. Uber and Lyft increase prices, which helps not only to avoid the deficit, but also motivate some other drivers to work. The shifts of demand and supply curves happen not only intraday, but for short term and long term as well. For example, if a large conference takes place in a city, the rates of the hotels are likely to skyrocket. That dynamics is due to the shift of the demand curve to the top right, as now more customers are willing to get the service. As for the supply curve, at this particular market it is a vertical line, as the capacity of the hotels is fixed. That's why the price increases so quickly. It goes without saying that the long-term shifts of the demand and supply curves have the most dramatic impact on the market. For instance, nowadays the electric cars are gaining a larger and larger share of the global auto fleet. One of the key elements of their rechargeable batteries is cobalt. The expected success of the electric cars will trigger skyrocketing demand for this element. The demand curve for cobalt will move significantly to the right, pushing the equilibrium price up. The market has already anticipated that. That's why the price for cobalt jumped by almost 130% since late 2016, while the commodity index decreased by 3%. There will be a downward pressure on the price of cobalt as well, as the cobalt production will increase and new production facilities will be launched. For instance, rising prices are encouraging operators to produce cobalt as a byproduct of other metals, such as nickel and copper. Authorities in Chile are planning to restart cobalt production after a more than 
seven decade break. These factors will push the supply curve to the right and the market equilibrium will find a lower price. The long-term shifts might be initiated on the supply side as well. Let's look at the example of the aluminum market. China, which produces around half of the world's aluminum, has decided to cut the capacity of its aluminum facilities in order to combat air pollution. That means that less aluminum will be offered to the market at each of the pricing points. Thus, the supply curve will move to the left, pushing the equilibrium price up. That is already reflected in the upward trend of price at the market in 2016-17. The opposite example is offered by milk producers. In 2014, the prices for milk were going up, which made lots of dairy firms invest in their capacity. As a result, in 2015-16, there was considerable oversupply of milk. The supply curve moved to the bottom right and the equilibrium price dropped. As you can see on this chart, after increase in 2014, the price dropped off the cliff. Now, those were the examples of the shifts of the demand and supply curves, which should be distinguished from the movements along the curves. The movements happen whenever there is a change in the price level, while customer's behavior or company's behavior remain the same. For instance, the introduction of price control by the government is likely to change the demand and the supply, but not to shift the curves. With lower or higher price levels that the government fix, there will be new demand and supply volumes, but the position of the curves will remain the same, all else equal.